Well, part of this uh, unit on regular expressions, we're going to take a look at uh, some more advanced uh, use of using matching groups in regular expressions. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at um, the case where we use what's called named groups. So previously we were able to see that we, by enclosing part of the regular expression pattern in uh, round brackets, that we were able to go and then uh, extract that the match for that part of the pattern out via the uh, groups uh, method of the results object. The problem with this is that if you have a lot of different subparts of the pattern you want to match, it can get a little bit tricky to keep track of which part of the pattern goes with which number in, in, in the groups method. And so one way around this is instead of uh, just relying on the order of which your sub patterns uh, of your, your match groups are happening in your uh, regular expression pattern, you can actually give them a name. And the syntax for this, and indeed the syntax we're going to see for a lot of these uh, more advanced uses of match groups, is that immediately after the open round bracket, you put a question mark, and then there's a code that says how to go and interpret this more advanced syntax of the group. So when we want to name the group, then uh, it goes open brackets, question mark, then a capital P, uh, I guess that stands for um, uh, parameter, um, and then uh, in greater than and less than signs, you put the name you want to attach to this particular matching group. So for example, for our uh, username matching um, example, uh, what I've done here is I've uh, put the, the first part of the pattern where we're matching the PYLL or ED letters, which is telling us about what school registered the student to start with, we've given that, uh, call that particular parameter school. And so you see there's the open round brackets, the question mark, the P, and then in between the greater than and less than signs, it says school. And then similarly, we've done the same thing with the year group. Um, they, so where we had the um, round brackets backslash D and then two of those, um, now we've given that the parameter name year. Um, so then we will use that to actually match against a particular username. What you can see is that, I mean, obviously we, we match the whole username, um, but uh, if we call the group dict method of the result object, then that returns a dictionary where the keys are the names of the uh, match groups that we've asked for, and the values are the corresponding match values. So another thing that we might want to go and do um, is to, in fact, not capture, to not return the contents of a matching group. So we've seen that we've got sort of two ways in which we're using matching groups. We can use them because we want to extract part of the um, regular expression, part of the pattern that's matched. We want to get that, that bit of the match back out of our um, uh, as a separate thing. But we also be using them because we need to go and group together different parts of the regular expression. And it's in this latter case where we're using it just to group, to group together parts of the regular expression that we maybe don't necessarily want to go and return the values or, or to extract those as separate values. And so we need to have a way of saying, yes, okay, use this as a group, but we're not really interested in, in what the answer is at the end of it. And the syntax to go and do that um, is you have the open um, uh, brackets, you have the question mark, and then you have a colon. And then you have the, the 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 actual pattern bit that goes within within that group. So in this example here, for example, we we are uh, capturing the um, initial two letters. So that's still just behaving like a regular match group. But now we said, well, we don't actually care about what year these user accounts were created in. And so we've said we're not going to um, capture that match, even though we're we've still got the group there. And we need to have the the match group there because we want to say this whole bit of the pattern is optional we're just saying it's optional but we don't actually need to go and remember what it was um and now we're going to use the groups method and the groups method simply returns a tuple of all the matches from all of the subgroups um, and in this case there's just one element because in fact there's only the first group that we've um actually given it any value we've actually captured it we've kept hold of it We might also um, want to go and specify that the bit of the pattern we're matching is either preceded by or followed by another pattern without actually having to go and 
uh, include that other following or preceding part of the pattern in our match. So, for example, imagine we had a situation where we only wanted to recognize the usernames that were being given as part of a full email address. So, in other words, we want to pick up things which look like a username, but are followed by at leads.ac.uk. But we don't want to return the at leads.ac.uk as part of our pattern. We just want the username. So the way we can do this is we can put in the, the following pattern into a match group, which goes um, open brackets, question mark, and then equals. So for that particular example, this is how we'd construct the regular expression. So again, we start with the same thing we've been doing before with a word boundary, the letters P, Y, L, L, or E, D, which we're capturing. Uh, we've gone back to capturing the two digits of the year group. And then we have the between two and four alphanumeric characters. And now I've added to that, I said, and what we're expecting to see after this is the um, bit of the pattern, which goes at leads.ac.uk. And you see when we actually try this out on a, um, a string, which contains some uh, email addresses and some just bare usernames, and here we're using find itter to go and loop through all the things that match. It says there are exactly two things that match, but you see what it's got and pulled out um, is just the username parts of those two email addresses. So it's although it's used the fact that at leads.ac.uk follows on after the username part, it doesn't in fact match that part of the, the overall pattern. So the other thing to note when we did that is that we had to go and put backslashes in front of the full stops um, in the uh, username part of the, in the, the email address part of it. And that was because we needed to match the, the really the dot that's in the email address. And we didn't want the, the, the full stop in the pattern to be interpreted as match any character. Um, and that comes back to what we said earlier in, uh, I think it was part two, that if you uh, need to actually uh, use one of these characters that forms the syntax of the regular expression mini language as, as a literal character, then you need to escape it by putting a backslash in front of it. If we want to go and make sure we precede the pattern that we're matching with a certain string, then the equivalent to the um, open brackets question mark equals is to do open brackets question mark less than equals. Um, and then that will go and um, uh, uh, get it to match the bit in front of our, our, our pattern. So moving on, there's now a very, I want to introduce a very powerful feature of how you can use these regular expressions. And that's the ability to refer to an earlier part of a, a pattern later on. And in particular, to refer to a match group you've already matched once later on in the pattern. And the example I want to give here is to suppose that we are trying to make a pattern that is going to match a quoted string following the same sort of rules that Python uses for how you define a string constant. So as we know, in Python, there are four possible patterns that could mark the start and end of a quote. So that is, you could have a single quote, you could have a triple single quote, you could have a double quote, and you could have a triple double quote. But the important thing is that the opening and closing patterns for that quote need to be the same. So that is, you can't start a string with a single quote and finish it with a double quote. You can't start a string with a single triple quote and finish it with a single quote or a double triple quote, a uh, triple double quote even. Um, so you have to have the, 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 the quote marks have to match for the beginning and the end. So if we want to go and construct a regular expression pattern to, mark, to, to identify that, then one of the best ways we're going to do is to have it the ability to actually identify what pattern it is we open the quote with and look for that to close the quote. So here's how we can go about doing that. So I've defined this regular expression using verbose mode. Um, so it comes in three parts. So the, the first part then is it looks for, um, uh, well, the first thing it does is it, is it starts a, a match group and then it looks um, inside the match group for a double quote three times. So that's the backslash, double quotes, curly braces, three close curly braces, or 
a single quote three times. So again, that's looking for the backslash quote, curly braces three, or a double quote or a single quote. The reason we put the triple quoted ones first is that in this sort of this pattern or this pattern or this pattern or this pattern, it's going to go with the first one it sees. So if we had, say, a triple double quoted string, uh, well, that's going to match a single quoted string as well. Um, and then the first of the triple quotes is going to match the 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 uh, a, a quote on its own. So we have to put the triple quote things first. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether we do double quotes or single quotes first within that, but we have to do the triple quotes first so that the thing that when we just use one quote character, it doesn't um, doesn't match that. So then the next line uh, we'll explain to you in a little bit more detail on, on the next slide. But essentially what it's doing is it's looking for zero or more um, patterns that are not the first group it saw. So it are not the uh, opening quotes. And then the third line says, and now we look for a closing quote. Um, and then in the flags, I've just set the, the verbose flag because I've used the multi-line um, regular expression with comments and so on. So I can explain what was going on. So then uh, we can go and use that. So here I've created a string. Um, it gets a little bit quote complicated, of course. I have to start using all the available quote options I have because um, I am going to put in here a string which itself includes a triple quoted string, which in turn includes a uh, single uh, 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 one double quoted um, string as well. Um, and um, uh, so we've got these sort of nested quotes. Um, and um, we, what we try to do is we're going to try and look for the bit that's got just the triple quoted string. So the thing we're trying to match for in this particular case is going to be the open triple double quotes, and then a quoted string and open quotes, another quoted string, close quotes, inside it, close triple quotes. Um, so that's the thing we're going to try and match. And you can see that, in fact, that's exactly what happens here. Um, so I've uh, run the pattern match, I've printed out the overall match, and I've also asked it to show me the result of group one, which is the opening quote, which you can see it's returned as a triple quote. Now, that second line, well, okay, so the first thing is that where we need to go and refer to the, the, nest, the, the match groups inside the pattern, we refer to them as backslash one, and then you could have backslash two, et cetera, if you needed to refer to more groups than that. So um, in our case, our opening quote was our first match group. And that's why on the third line, when we wanted to refer to closing quote, we could just refer to it back as backslash one, meaning whatever it was you got on the first um, match group, look again for the same thing. Now, that second line was a bit complicated. So let's do a little bit of unpacking of it. So we start on the sort of innermost set of brackets. We have open square brackets, question mark, exclamation mark, slash one, close brackets. So how do we interpret that? That is saying that, well, the, the um, uh, question mark, exclamation mark um, in at the start there is saying um, not this. Um, so it's saying um, we're looking for something which, which does not match this. And then the backslash one is saying our opening quotes. So the way to read that is don't match the opening quotes. Now, this particular syntax for saying don't match this pattern is um, what's called as a not consuming uh, pattern. So in other words, it doesn't um, move the, 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 the way we're looking forward at all. It, it's what's in, in known as a look ahead pattern. So uh, just like we had when we were looking at the email addresses, we were asking to say, and something which is followed by an at Leeds AC UK. That is also technically a look ahead pattern, meaning that it doesn't become part of the match. So again, this bit we're saying not the opening quotes. That's a look ahead, it's not part of the match. So therefore, after that, we need to put a full stop, which is saying match a character. And that does actually match a, a particular character. So that first little part says, match something which is not the opening quotes. <coughs> so then we go to the next outermost set of brackets. And that's a 
open brackets, question marks, colon. And we've come across the question mark colon bit that is used to say, don't capture this, don't record it. Um, and that's because we're just grabbing one character from the middle of the quote between the strings, and we don't want to do anything with that one character. And then finally, at the end, we have the asterisk, and that is saying, repeat the last thing zero or more times. And so what we end up with is something which will um, repeat zero or more times a match to a character that is not the opening quote. So that's then used to go and, 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 and work our way through um, the full structure. So actually the pattern we've developed there could actually get confused if you had a triple quoted string inside a single quoted string. But it turns out that that's not in fact legal Python either. So it's not really a problem that that would get confused because it, it's not a, a, a scenario in which you could actually expect that to happen. Um, of course, this example might be a little bit easier to understand and to follow if we're able to use named groups. So in that first version of it, we were using um, just the numbered groups. If we want to look at the named groups version of that, this is what the pattern looks like. So on that first line where we have the open quote, we're now going to give a name to that match group. So we use the question mark P and then the name of the group in greater than and less than. Uh, symbols. So that's doing the same, other than that, it's doing the same pattern. It's grabbing the, the those opening quote options and it's assigning it to a name group, group called open quote. The second line is structured somewhat similarly, but it actually looks a little bit more complicated. And that's because when we need to go and tell it that we don't want to match the open quote group, we can't now just refer to backslash one um, the way we can refer to it is we can refer to it as a um, open brackets, question marks, P equals, and then the name of the, uh, the group. So that particular construct is how you can refer to a, a named group back within the same uh, pattern. Um, we'll show you again later. There's in fact yet another syntax you could also use in this situation. Um, and then after that, you've got the, the full stop. That's the same as we had before. That's the, the match to any character. Um, and then uh, after that, finally, we have the uh, asterisk to say zero or more of doing those things. And then on the third line, again, we refer back to the open quote group. And we go and do that. That all works. And now we can uh, look at the match and also look at the group dict. And you'll see that we've captured that opening quote in a, a key called open quote, which was the name of the group we used. So um, within the named groups, as I said, we were using the um, question mark P equals and the name uh, compared to the backslash number for that we were using in the unnamed in the numbered groups. So to finish with now, I just want to go and go over a couple of other methods that are uh, found for uh, uh, patterns that are very useful. Um, and actually, again, as with a lot of these things, they also exist as a function within the RE module. And the first of these is the dot split method or the RE dot split function. And this allows us to split a string by using regular expressions to identify the point at which we want to go and split. So this is considerably more flexible than using the regular string dot split method, um, albeit at the cost of being a bit slower because you're using regular expressions. So, for example, if we had a um, sentence full of words, you might use string dot split um, with then a space character in order to go and split that string up into individual words. Um, however, that does give you some problems in certain circumstances, particularly with punctuation marks, um, as well as with repeated spaces. So the following regular expressions actually do a slightly better job. So here's our, our string. Um, so it's in fact a two line string and it's got some punctuation marks. And the first thing we try doing is we just try using the regular string dot split method. And you'll see, yes, it does split things up by words, but then you see that you've got um, 
for example, over comma new line marker um, as a word. Um, and uh, at the end, we got not dot, 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 which um, is maybe not quite what we wanted. Uh, and there's also a blank word at the end of that. And then in the next line, I use the regular expression version of that. So in this case, I'm going to um, just use the function version. So I'm going to give it um, the pattern I want to split on, um, as well as the, the text I'm going to use to split. And the regular expression pattern I'm going to use is the backslash w plus. And if you remember that um, backslash lowercase w meant alphanumeric characters. So in this case, capital W means everything which is not an alphanumeric character. So I'm looking to go and split my string on anything which is one or more non-alphanumeric characters. And so you see, if you compare it with the simple split, the over, for example, is now done correctly. Um, it just includes the letters O-V-E-R and doesn't include the comma and the new line marker. Um, and the not at the end also doesn't include those extra full, full stops. There is, however, right on the very end of that, um, an empty string. And that's come about because um, right at the end of the um, uh, uh, code, it ends up saying, oh, yes, there's a repeated um uh things that could separate out a pattern it's going to pick that up as a potentially as as a word um to, to split on um so this is doing a slightly nicer job um but actually um in this particular instance there's an even better way of doing it which for this particular job using uh find all um would work better and so again we can use this as a function in the regular expression module, in the RE module. And so in this case, I'm just doing re.findall. And now the pattern I'm giving it is, if you like, the opposite of what I was doing with split. I'm now asking it to um, find all the sequences of alphanumeric characters. Um, and in other words, that's finding all the words. And you can see that's exactly what it does, is it finds um, uh, exactly the, uh, the, the words that were in that string. The other thing you can uh, you can do that's very useful in the regular expression module is the sub function or the sub method, and this substitutes uh, value. So this is a find and replace using regular expressions. So as a very quick example, let's just show how we can replace all the vowels in that string with underscores. So this is the code. It's just one line. So we call the re dot sub function. The pattern we're going to give it is uh, a list of alternatives, which is just the five vowels. So in other words, that's going to match a single vowel one at a time. And then next, we give it the thing we want to replace um, with the thing we found. And that's the underscore. And then finally, we give it the text to go and replace. And then again, that's our, our two line string. And you can see it has indeed replaced every single vowel in that string with an underscore. Um, which is actually still remarkably readable. I mean, it just goes to show how little you actually need the vowels to be present in order to have a good guess at what the uh, text is trying to say. That's all very well, but actually um, there are other ways you could go and do the same thing with the standard string methods. What's maybe more useful is that the replacement string you use can also make reference to match groups from your original search pattern. So uh, as an example of doing that, here's one where we're going to recognize a lead student email address and we're going to rewrite them to be in a different institution. So here's our pattern. And again, I put it into verbose mode to, to make it a bit clearer. So the first thing we're going to do is going to open uh, start a match group. We then have the pattern we've used lots of times before to recognize a username. Um, so that's the... Um, the, the PYLL or ED uh, and so on. Um, and then we're going to look for at leads.ac.uk. We could have used a, a look ahead pattern here, but um, uh, in fact, in this case, I've just gone and um, uh, used the, the regular match. Um, and that's because, in fact, we want to make sure that the full email address is included in the thing we're matching, because that's what we're going to replace. We're trying to replace the whole of the email address. So we do actually want the at Leeds ACUK thing to be part of our match. 
Um, and then we have a string which has some usernames and it has some usernames which are part of email addresses. So now we actually um, go and do the, um, the substitution. So we're using, in this case, we're using the uh, method uh, version of the sub. So it's the as a method of the pattern we've just compiled. And therefore we don't need to pass the, the pattern we're using into it because that's already uh, in there because it's a method of the pattern. And so we just pass it the replacement and then the string we're trying to replace on. And you can see here that the uh, replacement string has a backslash one at the start of it. And then when we see what it's actually gone and done, you can see it's replaced the at leads.ac.uk with at cam.ac.uk. Um, unfortunately, that's not in itself enough to go and um, move students to the University of Cambridge because um, uh, their usernames don't work in the same pattern as Leeds ones do. That's not the only reason why that doesn't just move them to the University of Cambridge either, obviously. Um, and we can do the same with uh, named groups. Um, so when we're using named groups, the, the pattern we're using here is, again, very similar to something we've seen before. So that open match group, I've now given it a name, username. But other than that, it's basically the same. Again, we match the Leeds AC UK address. Our string is the same. But now when we come to do the substitution, when we want to refer to the named group, we use the syntax slash G and then in uh, greater than and less than signs, the, the username. Um, in fact, you can use that slash G syntax if you're referring to a named group within a, inside a pattern, um, as we were in a previous section in this part. Um, but if you're using it in sub, this is how you have to do it. The um, open curly braces question mark P equals uh, syntax doesn't work in this situation. But you see, it still has the same effect. It still alters the um, email addresses. And then finally, one of the most complicated things you can go and do with the uh, re.sub functions or the pattern.sub method is instead of giving it a replacement text, you can give it a function to call that will go and um, do the transformation for you. So as an example of this, we're going to write a, a bit of code which will replace all the usernames with the uppercase version of those usernames. So the first thing I do is I define a function, um, and that function has to have a single parameter, and the single parameter has to be a regular expression match. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to have it return the, the string that matched uh, turned into uppercase with the dot upper method. So now all I go and do is I use re.sub, I uh, feed it in my username matching pattern that we've used so many times before. I then give it the function as an identifier. So that's just the name of the function without any brackets or anything. And I give it the string that we want to transform. And then you can see here, that's exactly what it's gone and done. It's located all of the usernames and it's made them all uppercase. Um, and of course, obviously that, that, function that does the transformation could be doing all kinds of very clever things. But in this particular case, it all it's doing is just uppercasing things. So in this unit, um, in, in four parts, we've gone through a kind of whistle stop tour of some of the things you can do with regular expressions. Um, and we've only really just scratched the surface of what you could do there. Uh, regular expressions are incredibly powerful. Um, but it's also really easy to get overwhelmed with the syntax. Um, and because uh, in some senses, it's almost like uh, um, uh, playing around with a, a different programming language. And then the other thing is that regular expressions are actually found in many, many different programming languages. So obviously we've taught you the Python version of regular expressions, but you may well come across them in other contexts. The only problem is that there are, say, slight dialects of regular expression language. So they kind of the simple stuff all tends to work the same, but some of the more complicated options don't always exist in all languages or they're subtly different as to how you specify them. Um, so there's a website I really strongly recommend looking at, which is um, reg regex101.com. Um, and this lets you um, experiment with your regular expressions and develop them. And we'll go and explain how it works. So this is just a screenshot from, from the website showing um, 
the um, uh, regular expressions we've been working with. Um, and you see it, it goes and highlights all the various bits. It explains what they're all doing. You can give it some tests to work with and it will go and highlight the bits that are matching. Um, and even within that match, it's showing you which bits are matching um, on which parts of the pattern. So you can really delve in and understand exactly how that pattern is developing it before copying your pattern into your own program for your use later. Um, so as I said, regular expressions are a, 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 a um, very advanced feature of, of programming. They're certainly not something that is um, examinable for um, the Computing 2 course. But on the other hand, it's a sort of tool that can be very, very powerful and very, very useful um, if you deploy it correctly. 